OK, so we're going to look at trigonometric functions of complex numbers, and finding nice expressions for these. So we'll start off with cos and sine of a complex number, then later we'll also look at tan, sec, cosec, and cot. But before we get started, we need to think quite carefully about how we even define these functions if you've got a complex number in there. So to get started here, we'll take for granted Euler's formula. So we're going to just take this as a fact that e to the i theta is always equal to cos theta plus i times sine theta. This is going to be our starting point. Then if you imagine we substitute in minus theta into this formula, e to the minus i theta is now cos minus theta plus i sine minus theta. This is going to give us a nice way of working with cos and sine, because you'll notice that cos minus theta, this is just the same as cos theta, and sine minus theta is just the negative of sine theta. So we get this nice expression for e to the minus i theta. And treating these two equations as simultaneous equations now, if we add them both together, you'll see that on the left-hand side we get e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta is now cos theta plus cos theta, so 2 cos theta plus i sine theta minus i sine theta, so we get rid of our sine thetas. Then if we just divide through on both sides by 2, you'll see that cos theta has this nice expression here. And we can do something very similar if we take this first equation and take away everything from the second equation, you get e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta. This is now going to be i sine theta minus minus i sine theta, so 2i sine theta. Then once again, if we just divide through by 2i, we get a nice expression sine theta is e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta over 2i. So this is how we'll work with cos and sine with complex numbers. So if we get started with cos now, You'll notice cos a plus bi, we could actually treat this as an angle sum formula case. So cos a plus bi, you know that cos a plus b just in general is cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. And we can actually prove that this is always true for complex numbers as well. It's, in fact, it's easier to prove with complex numbers in this setup. But then we can use this formula to get cos a cos bi minus sine a sine bi. At this point we could start, we found an expression, but we can try and make this a bit nicer because it would be quite nice to express this without having any imaginary terms inside our functions. So if we want to think about cos of bi, let's now put this into our definition. Cos theta is this exponential form. So we substitute in bi for our theta, you get e to the i times bi plus e to the minus i times bi, all divided by 2. Then when we multiply out these terms, you get e to the minus b plus e to the minus i times i gives you a positive 1, so just e to the b over 2. Then if I rewrite this as e to the b plus e to the minus b over 2, you might see that this actually looks kind of familiar. So this is just the definition of hyperbolic cosine of b. So we can just write this as hyperbolic cos of b. So that gives us a nice way of dealing with our cos bi term. And we can do the same sort of thing for sine bi. We just plug this into our formula now here. We get e to the i times bi minus e to the minus i times bi, all divided by 2i. So then this gives us e to the minus b minus e to the b over 2i. Then we'll multiply the top and bottom of our fraction by i. So this gives us i We'll take this outside, e to the minus b minus e to the b, all divided by 2 times i times another i gives us minus 2. So then we'll turn this fraction, just take the negative of numerator and denominator, we get i times e to the b minus e to the minus b over positive 2. Again, if this looks familiar, this is actually just i times the definition now of hyperbolic sine of b. So we've got a nice expression here for our sine bi as well, which we'll use now we can get a slightly nicer expression for cos of a plus bi in terms of familiar functions of real numbers. So we leave the cos a alone, but we get instead of cos bi, we can replace this by hyperbolic cos of b. And similarly, we leave the sine a alone, but we replace sine bi by hyperbolic sine of b multiplied by i. So we get a factor of i times sine a times hyperbolic sine of b. So this is our nice expression of cos of a complex number, just in terms of familiar functions of real numbers. We'll now do the exact same thing for sine of a plus bi. 
So sine of a plus bi, again we'll start off with our angle sum formula for sine. So we know that sine of a plus b, this is always equal to sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. We can prove that this works for complex numbers as well using our exponential form from earlier. So then this gives us sine of a cos bi plus cos of a sine bi. And we can deal with our cos bi and sine bi terms as before. So now we've got sine a hyperbolic cos of b plus, we get a factor of i again, times cos a times hyperbolic sine of b. So this gives us a nice representation for sine of a complex number in terms of familiar functions of real numbers. Now we'll do the same thing for tan. So tan of a plus bi, we can just write this as sine of a plus bi over cos of a plus bi, and we could get an expression. But I quite like to express this in terms of tan of a and potentially hyperbolic tan of b. So let's see what happens with this. We'll use the angle sum formula for tan, which is again one that we can prove using our exponential definitions, but tan of a plus b, this is always going to be equal to tan a plus tan b over 1 minus tan a tan b. So now if we substitute lowercase a and bi into this formula, we get tan a plus tan bi. So we'll need to deal with the tan bi term in a sec. And this is all divided by 1 minus tan a tan bi. Okay, so what do we do with our tan bi term? Well, we know that tan bi, at least where it's well defined, is going to be equal to sine bi over cos bi. So there'll be some values of b where cos bi is zero, where tan bi isn't going to be well defined, but we'll just proceed ignoring these values. And sine bi we know is i times hyperbolic sine of b, and we know that cos bi is just hyperbolic cos of b. So hyperbolic sine of b over hyperbolic cos of b, we can just take this as our definition of hyperbolic tan of b. So we see here that actually tan of bi is just i multiplied by hyperbolic tan of b. So then we see that tan of a plus bi, we can tidy this up to get a really nice expression, tan a plus i times hyperbolic tan b, where we just replace tan bi by i hyperbolic tan b, then all divided by 1 minus tan a times hyperbolic tan B, where we also have a factor of i there. So this is a nice representation now for tan of a complex number in terms of tan and hyperbolic tan of real numbers. So now let's have a look at sec and cosec. So we can define sec of a complex number just as the reciprocal of cos of that complex number, and similarly with cosec and sine. So if you want to find out what is sec of a plus bi, this is just going to be 1 over cos of a plus bi. So we can actually use our previous result now to say that sec of a plus bi is going to be 1 over cos a hyperbolic cos b minus i times sine a times hyperbolic sine of b. But it'd be quite nice if we could actually express this in terms of sec, cosec, and perhaps their hyperbolic counterparts as well. So how could we do this? Well, cos a is just going to be the same as 1 over sec of a. So if we were to multiply throughout on the top and bottom by sec a, this will actually cancel out with your cos a term there. And we're left with, in the numerator, you'd have sec a. And we'll also multiply by hyperbolic sec of b, which cancels out with our hyperbolic cos of b, just because they're reciprocals of each other. So you'll now have hyperbolic sec of b in the numerator. And then in the denominator, all of this just turns into 1. And we've still got i sine a hyperbolic sine b, but then we also need to multiply by sec a and hyperbolic sec b here. So then we'll do the same thing to get rid of our sine a and hyperbolic sine of b. So we're going to multiply throughout on the top and bottom of our fraction by cosec of a and hyperbolic cosec of b. So we see we get a lot of terms in the numerator now, and then in the denominator we'll have cosec a hyperbolic cosec of b, which get multiplied by that 1. Then these two terms disappear, leaving us with i times sec a times hyperbolic sec of b. So this is our expression for sec of 
A plus BI, and unfortunately, even though you might be tempted to get rid of the I there, this doesn't really simplify any further. But still, this is quite a nice way of expressing it in terms of sec, cosec, and hyperbolic counterparts of some nice real numbers. Now we can use a similar approach for cosec of a plus bi. So we know that this is 1 over sine of a plus bi. We use our previous expression, and we get 1 over our previous expression. And then we're going to do the same thing. If we multiply throughout now by cosec of a, this will get rid of our sine a term here. So we get a cosec a in the numerator. And we also multiply by hyperbolic sec of b, which leaves us just with 1 in the denominator, plus i cos a hyperbolic sine b, but then we've also got to multiply now by cosec a and hyperbolic sec of b. So now we want to get rid of our cos a and hyperbolic sine of b terms here, so we need to multiply in the numerator. So we first of all keep our cosec a hyperbolic sec b terms, but we also need to multiply by sec a and we multiply by hyperbolic cosec of b, which gets rid of these terms in the denominator that we don't want. So then multiplying these by 1, you get sec a multiplied by hyperbolic cosec b plus i. So these two terms disappear, and we're just left with cosec a and hyperbolic sec of b. And again, we could try and get rid of the i in the denominator, but I find that doesn't really simplify the expression. So we'll stick with this as our nice way of expressing cosec of a complex number. Now finally for cot, we can again use the fact that cot is the reciprocal of tan to write cot of a plus bi as just 1 over tan of a plus bi. Then we can use the formula that we've already got for tan of a plus bi, we just take the reciprocal of this, we now have 1 minus i tan a hyperbolic tan of b, all divided by tan a plus i hyperbolic tan of b. And we want to express this in terms of cot and hyperbolic cot, so we'll do the same sort of trick as before. First of all, we'll multiply everything on the top and bottom just by cot of a, so this will get rid of your tan a terms. So then we get cot a minus i times hyperbolic tan b, where the tan a term there disappears, and the same with this one, this just turns into a 1, Then we have plus i times cot a, and we keep the hyperbolic tan of b. So now we want to get rid of our hyperbolic tans of b, so we just multiply by hyperbolic cot of b, which will give us then cot a times hyperbolic cot of b minus i, so this gets rid of our hyperbolic tan b when we multiply by hyperbolic cot b, and then here we have hyperbolic cot of b plus i times cot of a is our nice expression for cot of a complex number. We'll see, this is actually quite a lot nicer than what we had for sec and cosec.